Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and welcome to this tutorial on the B4 pushback or start procedures and the engine start in the Airbus A320. So we are just done with our PA. We have finished the cockpit preparation checklist and we can now prepare for the pushback. In flight simulation, since it does take GSX rather long to connect, and prepare the pushback equipment, I would recommend to start this procedure as early as possible once your loading is complete. So for us, first thing is to remove the external power. And we have done that. And now in the Phoenix at least, when the parking brake is set, which it is, by flicking the beacon on and off, you can initiate the GSX pushback procedure. If you're using other add-ons, just use whatever it takes to initiate the procedure. Okay, so the before pushback or start procedure actually starts with the final load sheet. So what we're going to do is we'll head over into the ACAS and have a look at the final load sheet that we have received. So our load sheet is in compliance with the earlier editions. And if we quickly compare the values, and we find zero fuel weight is 100 kilos down, so 57.8. And the center of gravity for zero fuel weight is 30.5. So slight change here in um, our numbers. Fuel in tanks. Now this one is still a little bit up high since we did burn quite a bit of fuel since that was generated due to all my lengthy explanations in this tutorial series. So 6.5 is what we have there. Um, that means we are 300 kilos down from the final load sheet. We could probably just generate a new one at this point. So I will simply go ahead and force a new one since the load sheet is uh, rather inaccurate here. So resend that, please. Let's see. So this load sheet is not good. Let's have a look at this one. So 57.8 has stayed unchanged. The zero fuel weight 30.5 has changed stayed unchanged as well and for some reason it looks like the phoenix doesn't update the uh, fuel and tanks so well we would make sure that everything matches over here if it doesn't in the simulation then okay so be it um in any case we verify that our load sheet data is accurate and then we take the center of gravity 28.7 and looking on the trim wheel over here we can see 28.7 somewhere over here so we're looking at a trim of maybe 0.1 unit up so we go onto the performance page and insert that slash up 0.1 and we put that in here and that's it so since our takeoff weight itself remember we calculate 65 tons is still very much within that range we don't need to redo any of our performance if there was a greater difference between the takeoff weight that we assumed in our preliminary pre-flight procedure and the actual takeoff weight on the load sheet, then we would, of course, go ahead and recalculate. All right, the next check then is the fuel on board, and we make sure that we got 6,540 over here. 6,300 was the minimum for our flight, so we're good to go with the uh, fuel that we have here. And on the ECAM page, slight imbalance, but well within any limits, so we don't have to worry about this. Okay, so we made sure that our takeoff data is still within the um, same speed range. Clean speed 214 is what it indicates to us over here. And on the performance calculator 215, that's within one knot. Perfectly fine, nothing we need to do. Okay, so FMS selection for our pushback and for our flight plan is going to be flight plan on the pilot monitoring side and performance on the pilot's flying side. So, now we have pretty much prepared our airplane for the before start flow pattern. So now all the final checks, everything that we needed to do at the gate is good. And we know that we are like this good to push and start the airplane. So let's go ahead with our before start flow pattern. The first thing is to get our ATC pushback and startup clearance. And while we are requesting that, we are also going to switch the transponder into the auto selection. Note that if you're flying in VATSIM, then you might have to switch it on, but in the real world, you switch it to auto. Now, when that is done, we are going to get our um, pushback clearance. So the beacon light comes on. We check that the windows are closed and we see the red pin down here. So if it was something like this, then the window 
would not be closed, the pressure vessel would not be contained, and we'd get a depressurization. So if you see the window handle like this without the red um, part visible, then your window is not closed properly. Make sure the red part is actually visible down there. Next we move down to the ECAM. On here we'd have to check that the slides are armed. Unfortunately, in the Phoenix it only arms them when we start to move, but in the real world you would check that the slides are actually armed, and of course all the doors are closed. Then you move down to the thrust lever, make sure they're in idle and the parking brake is as needed. Alright, when that check is complete, we can go for the B4 start checklist. So, park and brake. Set. Again, always check it on the triple indicator. Don't check it on the um, don't check it on the switch. Take off speeds and thrust. Now, this one in the real world is an interesting one. The pilot flying starts by reading all of these. The pilot monitoring then cross-checks that you see them on the primary flight display. Thereafter, the pilot monitoring reads these, and the pilot flying checks that he sees them on the display. Since in the simulation we are a little bit limited there, we just gotta do both at the same time. So when the challenge takeoff speed and thrust comes, we're going to go V1141, VR141, V2144, flex 50, and we just cross-check that we see those values up here. Windows, check both sides. Closed, beacon on before start checklist complete. Alright, so now that we are basically ready to start moving, we are going to check that for the pushback the nose wheel steering disconnect memo shows. Otherwise, we might damage the airplane if we um, do the pushback. And, well, in case they didn't have a pin down there, it could of course always just turn the anti skip nose wheel steering switch off, but check for the memo. Okay, so our pushback is approved and we are going to face to the right, so we're going to go facing north and we'll take the orange taxi line here. Okay, so now we make contact with the ground, so with the um, guys in the tuck, and we are going to tell them that we're cleared for pushback. So there is no published phraseology for that, but it would go something like this. Ground from cockpit, go ahead. So, we are cleared for pushback and startup. Please confirm that all ground checks are complete and the airplane is ready to push. Okay, all ground checks are complete and we are ready to go. Release park and brake, please. Release it. Look at the brake pressure going down. Park and brake released. Clear to push. Facing north orange line. Roger, push them back. Facing orange line. Stand by for engine start. Standing by. So. The reason I said standby for engine start is because we must not start the engines until we are past the red line beyond the gate. And as you can see, it does take a little while here. And as soon as we're behind the red line and there is no equipment immediately behind us, then we would get clearance to start the engines from our ground crew. And that would go something like this. Cockpit from ground. Go ahead. So clear to start engines. Roger, starting engines in sequence 2, then 1. Okay, engine start in the Airbus is very easy. The mode selector goes to ignition start, and that is going to automatically turn off the packs, as you can hear in the background. Note that after 30 seconds, the packs would come on again if no engine start is initiated. You verify that all the amber crosses have disappeared from both the top and the bottom display, and when you see just green indications like here, we're going to commence the engine start. And to do that, engine to start. You just put the engine master switch into the forward position and that initiates the automatic start sequence. If automatic start does not initiate, check that the APU bleed is turned on. Chances are it's not. And that is usually the reason why the engine start might fail. Okay, so with that, our engine start is now in progress. One very important caution from the FCOM here. The engine starts regardless of thrust lever position. If the thrust levers are not set to idle, then thrust rapidly increases to the corresponding thrust lever position, causing a hazardous situation. So be very sure that the thrust levers are in idle. There is an ECAM caution provided for this, but be absolutely sure. Okay, the engine start is complete as soon as the avail light shows at the top, like we have over here, and then we can go ahead and start the other engine. So, engine 1 start. 
Okay, copper from ground, pushback is complete, set breaks. Verify the pressure over here. Okay, break set. And now they go ahead with the um, start. So, a couple of numbers that we should be aware of for the engine start here. And for this one I'm just going into the CFM engine, since that is what we fitted to the airplane. Basically, when the um, engine master lever is moved into the on position, there are no callouts for parameters necessary, and in case of an electrical power supply interruption during the start sequence, which is indicated by the loss of the ECAM display unit, abort the start by setting the engine master levers to off and thereafter perform a 30 second dry crank. Apart from that, all automatic, nothing to worry about. A couple of values to give you at hand though. So when you at first move the engine start lever or the engine master switch into the on position, you verify that the um, start valve is in line, bleed pressure indication down there is green, and the oil pressure starts increasing. Then at 16% N2, indication of the active igniter, either system A or B, is going to come up over here. At 22% N2, fuel flow increases, and 15 seconds maximum after fuel is turned on, you will see the EGT increase and the N1 increase. At 50% N2, the start valve is going to um, close automatically, and then the igniter is going, or the ignition indication is going to go off on the N2 up here. And once the avail light shows, we have completed the engine start. Idle parameters at sea level in ISAR conditions are approximately 19.5% N1, 58.5% N2, EGT approximately 390 degrees, and fuel flow approximately 275 kilograms per hour or 600 pounds per hour. And that is basically the engine start completed. Now, you can see slightly different values over here because, well, we are at a higher altitude and we also don't have ISR values, so some deviations can be normal. If anything was out of the ordinary, the others would alert you to it. Now, the automatic start sequence can interrupt itself and can attempt to restart the engine several times. So, if that happens, do nothing. If you need to do something, the Airbus is going to alert you to it over an ECAM message. All right, and with that, our engine start is completed and we can go into the after start flow pattern. Now, the after start flow pattern is initiated once both engines are started up and the away light is showing. So the pilot flying is going to turn the engine mode selector to norm and that is how the procedure is initiated. Now. For the pilot flying then, you go to the top and you turn off the APU bleed, unless needed, for, um, unless needed. You set the anti-ice as needed and turn the APU off as needed. Again, the only situation in which you would leave it on is if you wanted to conduct an APU to pack takeoff. Now, and that concludes includes the pilot flying action. The pilot monitoring then is going to arm the spoilers, reset the rudder trim, set the flaps as needed, and set the trim as needed. Finally, you are going to check the ECAM status using the status push button down here to verify if anything is in there. Now, if nothing is in the ECAM, then you will just see a blank area here on the um, engine warning display. If for example, we turned off a pack now, which is part of the Airbus green operating procedures. Then you might, for example, see STS down here, which is going to indicate that something is in the status page. So then open it up and you're going to see the inoperative systems. So like that, if there is no STS shown, don't need to check the status page, but just check if anything is um, in there. If the STS shows. If that doesn't show, you don't need to open the uh, page. All right, make sure that the amber nose wheel steering disconnect memo is not shown and tell the ground crew to disconnect and then we can run the after start checklist as soon as the clear signal from the ground is received. So when you basically see the um, ground gentleman holding up the pin, giving you the thumbs up. So after start checklist and again, we'll do it right from down here. So 
Anti-ice. There is nothing shown over here, so it's gotta be off. Ecom status. Checked. Pitch trim. And this one is a little bit tricky because you actually refer to the center of gravity rather than the trim units. Some people actually go onto the flight control page and check the units. Don't do that. Call out the trim. So when the challenge is pitch trim, then you say, for example, 28.5%. Rudder trim, neutral, and that's the afterthought check is complete. And since we're a little bit slow, we are already getting the all clear signal here from the cabin, so let's answer to that. Hello, Emmanuel here. The cabin is now secure for takeoff. Thank you. So when you get that call, you should press the reset button afterwards so that the um, alert light stops flashing. All right, and that is pretty much our tutorial complete to this point. I would like to say thank you very much for flying with us. I hope that you learned something, and then I see you all again right on the next one. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, if you're up for more, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you really love what I'm doing, would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching and see you all again on the next one.